Okay, guys. First thing we're going to want to do is make sure that you have downloaded all of your images to a single folder, either on your desktop or in your downloads or somewhere that you know that you can find them all. And once you've done that, we're going to open Pixlr and we are going to create new. And create new is creating the background upon which we're going to place all the images for the montage. We're going to make a black, big black background for this. So we're going to start with web 720p and select that. Then we're going to go over and name this. This is important. We're going to call this five piece montage. The width, we're going to make it huge. 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. Is that too much? Yeah, but we'll be able to crop out what we don't need. We want to have too much so we can spread out if we need to. Then we're going to go down here a little bit and we're going to toggle this background switch to bring up some color choices for the background. And you can see black is not available. But if we click on this elongated white tablet shape here, it brings up this infinite number of color choices. And we grab this circle. Come on. This little circle, drag it all the way down to the bottom until you see, oops, I didn't get it down there far enough. Where are you? Okay, what we want here is all zeros. All zeros means that's as black as we can get it. That's absolute black. And so now we're going to hit create. I need to get me out of the way here. Can I get me out of the way? I don't think I can. Okay, so now you'll see that we have this black square background. And we're then going to open the photos or the images that we're going to assemble to create your montage. So we go up here to File, Open Image. And in this case, we want to find all your images in that one file and we're going to select them all here. Select them all and then hit open. Okay. Now we need to resize all of them because as they come out of your camera, they are enormous. They're giant files and we would just want little modest size pictures for this. So we have to resize every one. And to do that, we're going to click on web again. But this time, we're going to dial in 400 by 300. When you dial in 400 and then click in this other box, it will default to 300. It will autofill that for you. Um, and what that's doing is that's maintaining the aspect ratio or the correct um, relative size of your photo without stretching it or squishing it at all. And then we just hit apply. And it's going to ask us to do that for every single one of these images that we open. So 400, and I just click in there, it gives me 300. Apply. Web. 400. Apply web 400, apply web 400, apply, and now they're all open. Okay, so generally it's a good idea to try to start 
with the image that you know is about in the middle or the center of your overall composition. And for most of you, that will mean maybe a shot of somebody's torso. Um, it's not imperative, but it helps you kind of center it in the center of the field so that you can build out from it without going off the edges of the page. So for me, I believe that's about the middle of this one. So we're going to start with this one. Uh, by the way, all of your images now appear up here at the top, lined up, and they're pretty easy access. So as you scroll through them, you can just see the different ones. OK, here's where I want to start. Now we're going to go to select. We've got that image open, select all. Then we're going to go to edit, copy. Then we're going to go back to the original background, which we named five piece montage. We're going to click on that. And we're going to go to edit, paste. And there it is. And you can see it's a little tiny file. But that's OK. It's really not that tiny. We just have a giant background. Now, at this point, if your image is vertical and it's showing up horizontal or it's just the orientation is wrong, you can grab this little circle. Just hover your mouse over the circle. And you can spin it as necessary to get it into place. Mine was in pretty good shape to begin with. So no big deal. Now, I will tell you right now that in order to zoom in, if you have a, a wheel on your mouse, you can just use that scroll wheel to zoom in. Um, and then you can recenter it by using these sliders or a little more convenient even is if you hold down the space bar, you get this little gloved hand and that allows you to move the entire thing, the entire background, wherever you want it. OK, so when that's in about the right relative position, you're good to move on to another image. And then I'm just going to work out from the center. It just so happens my centerpiece was actually here in the middle of all of my choices. So I'm just going to go on and do her lovely knee injury. Uh, again, we go to select all, edit, copy. Then we go back to the background, the five piece image, edit, paste. And the default goes to the Move tool, or what they call the Arrange tool, which is this one right here. And if you ever happen to get off of that, and you don't have this little crosshairs, and you can't move your photo or your image, you just want to go back there and click on that. Once you have these crosshairs, you know you can adjust your image around. OK, I'm going to get rid of this ad, scroll down a little bit. OK, now many of you will notice right off the bat that your sizes don't quite add up. You can see her legs are significantly wider than they were in real life. This is just the nature of montage, just kind of the angle of your camera. I did not move myself. But I did move the camera, and just moving the camera brings with it some inherent distortions. Um, you, you can adjust the size of your photo slightly. It's, you're never going to be able to get it perfect, and that's really not our objective. But if you do adjust the size of your photos, make sure you're only pulling from the corners so that it doesn't squish or elongate your image. It just... Um, it reduces the size, but it keeps the length and width ratio. We've talked about that before. So I'm going to get it just a little closer to actual size so it's not quite so obnoxious. Um, you know, again, the idea is not to try to get it perfect because it's just not possible. All right. Let's move on to another one. We'll get this one going. 
select all, edit, copy, back to the background, edit, paste, and we'll put this guy down here. I have to edit that one a little bit as well. Just kind of get it in place. Now, as you can see, when I get her, her right leg, which is on our left, pretty well lined up, the right side doesn't make any sense anymore. So you're going to have to just compromise on some of these things. And that's, that's part of the fun, just trying to figure out how it all goes together as, as best you can. There is going to be some distortion, and you just kind of live with it. Okay, let me use my mouse scroll wheel to scroll back a little bit, and I'm going to go grab this photo. Now, many of you will remember that I said, please try to avoid logos. And boy, look at that. There's a big logo. Now, to be perfectly honest, I intentionally <laughs> left that logo in the montage, or I had her keep that on because I wanted it to be clear that what you're looking at here was a sports injury. She had just played a soccer game and had some serious knee rash going on. Um, so that was a conscious deci decision and you know, I thought it made it look a little more sporty, but, you know, I break my own rules sometimes, just like you guys. Select all, edit, copy, back to the original, edit, paste, doo doo. Okay, now just to satisfy my own rules, I'm going to just take that one down a little bit and cover up her logo. That may be a little ridiculous to do that, but, you know, it closer, it more closely follows what I asked you to do. Okay, now if we zoom out, you can see, whoa, I have all kinds of extra space here. And I don't need all that extra space, so I'm going to crop it. I'm going to go over here to the crop tool. And it works just like the crop tool on most of your phones. Now, as you crop this, it is very important that you do not crop all the way up to the edge of the photo and make it really claustrophobic like that would. Okay? These need a little breathing space. So what would in real life, if this were a piece of poster board, be about two inches of just negative space all the way around it. So it's not trapped and claustrophobic. Okay, please humor me and do that. Even if you, if, even if you don't think it looks better, I do. <laughs> Make two versions if you don't like it. All right. Here we go. Now, last thing we're going to do is put some borders on these. So they look like individual photos. And in Pixlr, it's, it's very easy. Um, we just, one at a time, we're going to click on the individual photos, make it active. Then we're going to go up here to Filter, Inner Glow. And Inner Glow will default to the color white, 10 pixels, 50% feather, 100% opacity. If it's not at those settings, you should change it to those, but that is the default. And then you just hit apply. And look, we have a nice white border. I'm going to click on all of them and give them that little white border. Okay, now they're starting to look like real pictures that have their own individual identities. Filter, inner glow, 
apply. Now your last decision here, before you download and save it, is to decide if you like the layering of the photos. In other words, if, if you would want to move this photo behind this photo, that can happen. In this case, I don't want to do it because I'm covering up that logo, but I'll just show you how it works. So we click on that photo we want to move, and then you can come over here to the layers window. Each, each one of these photos has, a, has its own layer, and you can click and drag them into place. That, that gets a little dicey sometimes. What's a little bit easier is just using these up and down arrows. So I've got the the image I want to move, and then I can click the down arrow, and you can see immediately it shifted behind the other layer. Obviously, that looks pretty terrible, so I'm going to move it back. Let's see which one could we switch. Let's take a look at what this would look like switched. Did that do anything? Hmm. Well, that put this one on top of this one, and I don't really like that any better, so I'm going to go with that. Let's see what this one looks like on top of the other one. Hmm. That looks pretty good. Then we don't have to deal with that foot not lining up. Um, but let's keep going. How do we like that? Now that makes the knee stagger pretty much. Again, there's going to be offsets. That's that's not a criteria for success. It, it just happens. And sometimes it looks really interesting. In this case, it looks more like she's got a broken leg. So let's move that back. Maybe we'll want to move that one over a little bit now. Over and down. Let's see what this one looks like down here. I might do that a little bigger. I definitely want to be able to see that full injury on the knee. Okay, I might tweak that one a little bit more, but I don't want to run this video too long. So. I do have instructions for those of you who would like to see what it would look like on a white background with black borders around your photos. That can look really nice as well, um, but I'm not going to include that in the video. You, you'll just have to refer to uh, the written instructions that are also included with this assignment. So finally, what we want to do is go to File, Save. It will default to good settings. We want to save it as a JPEG. We want to save it as high quality. And then you just hit download. And that will save it to your downloads folder. OK. There you go. Thanks for stopping by. Pleasure doing business with you. Make sure you smash the like button.